The reader will perhaps understand that at first everything was so strange about me, and my position was the outcome of such unexpected adventures, that I had no discernment of the relative strangeness of this or that thing. I followed the llama up the beach and was overtaken by Montgomery, who asked me not to enter the stone enclosure. I noticed then that the puma in its cage and the pile of packages had been placed outside the entrance to this quadrangle. I turned and saw that the launch had now been unloaded, run out again, and was being beached, and the white-haired man was walking towards us. He addressed Montgomery. And now comes the problem of this uninvited guest. What are we to do with him? He knows something of science, said Montgomery. I'm itching to get to work again with this new stuff, said the white-haired man, nodding towards the enclosure. His eyes grew brighter. I dare say you are, said Montgomery, in anything but a cordial tone. We can't send him over there, and we can't spare the time to build him a new shanty, and we certainly can't take him into our confidence just yet. I'm in your hands, said I. I had no idea of what he meant by over there. I've been thinking of the same things, Montgomery answered. There's my room with the outer door. That's it, said the elder man promptly, looking at Montgomery, and all three of us went towards the enclosure. I'm sorry to make a mystery, Mr. Prendick, but you'll remember you're uninvited. Our little establishment here contains a secret or so. It's a kind of Bluebeard's chamber, in fact. Nothing very dreadful, really, to a sane man, but just now, as we don't know you... Decidedly, said I, I should be a fool to take offence at any want of confidence. He twisted his heavy mouth into a faint smile. He was one of those saturnine people who smile with the corners of the mouth down, and bowed his acknowledgement of my complacence. The main entrance to the enclosure was passed. It was a heavy wooden gate, framed in iron and locked, with the cargo of the launch piled outside it, and at the corner we came to a small doorway I had not previously observed. The white-haired man produced a bundle of keys from the pocket of his greasy blue jacket, opened this door, and entered. His keys, and the elaborate locking up of the place even while it was still under his eye, struck me as peculiar. I followed him and found myself in a small apartment, plainly but not uncomfortably furnished, and with its inner door, which was slightly ajar, opening into a paved courtyard. This inner door Montgomery at once closed. A hammock was slung across the darker corner of the room, and a small, unglazed window, defended by an iron bar, looked out towards the sea. This, the white-haired man told me, was to be my apartment, and the inner door, which, for fear of accidents, he said he would lock on the other side, was my limit inward. He called my attention to a convenient deck chair before the window, and to an array of old books, chiefly, I found, surgical works and editions of the Latin and Greek classics, languages I cannot read with any comfort on a shelf near the hammock. He left the room by the outer door, as if to avoid opening the inner one again. We usually have our meals in here, said Montgomery, and then, as if in doubt, went out after the other. Moreau! I heard him call, and for the moment I do not think I noticed. Then, as I handled the books on the shelf, it came up in consciousness. Where had I heard the name of Moreau before? I sat down before the window, took out the biscuits that still remained to me, and ate them with an excellent appetite. Moreau! Through the window I saw one of those unaccountable men in white, lugging a packing case along the beach. Presently the window frame hid him. Then I heard a key inserted and turned in the lock behind me. After a little while I heard through the locked door the noise of the staghounds that had now been brought up from the beach. They were not barking, but sniffing and growling in a curious fashion. I could hear the rapid patter of their feet 